um, is this colder than normal? And because it is, can we say that the, you know this is then linked to the impacts of climate change? It's a great question. So absolutely, this is not normal. For decades, NASA has been synonymous with exploration, discovery, and the relentless pursuit of knowledge. And just recently, the Space Agency has come out to announce that the most horrifying disaster yet could befall our planet in 2024 and spell the end of life as we know it on Earth. But with time running out and the fate of the world hanging in the balance, can NASA rise to the occasion and rewrite the narrative of our collective destiny? Or will humanity succumb to the merciless forces of the cosmos? Join us as we embark on a journey into the heart of this unfolding crisis to uncover the harrowing truth behind NASA's greatest challenge yet. The polar vortex is like a gigantic icy whirlwind that hangs out above the north and south poles of our planet. It's a massive swirl of super cold air that spins around high up in the sky. This frosty cyclone rotates counterclockwise around the North Pole and clockwise around the South Pole. Since August 2023, it's been getting bigger and stronger, which can shake up our usual winter weather. This icy vortex can mess with the weather in places like the United States, Canada, Northern Europe and Russia. There's something that keeps it from going wild, the polar jet stream. The polar jet stream is like a speedy river of air high above the Earth near the poles. It's like a ribbon of wind that acts as a barrier, making sure the polar vortex stays in place. So, while the polar vortex may try to stir things up, the jet stream is there to keep it under control. Throughout history, it's been super important for keeping the polar vortex stable and preventing it from collapsing. But if the jet stream, a fast-flowing air current, weakens a lot, it might not be able to keep the polar vortex in check anymore. This could lead to a total breakdown of the vortex, letting cold air spill out into the northern hemisphere. Understanding what the polar vortex is and why it's a big deal is crucial. It's like getting ready for whatever crazy weather might come our way in the next few months. The polar vortex, it's a swirling mass of super cold air, way colder than what's around it. It's always changing influenced by all sorts of stuff happening in the atmosphere. This vortex ramps up during winter, especially in the Northern Hemisphere, when the air above the polar regions gets seriously chilly, creating a zone of high pressure. This sets the stage for the formation of the polar vortex, a swirling mass of air. What makes it twirl is a cool thing called the Coriolis effect. As the Earth spins on its axis, it makes stuff like air and water seem like they're getting pushed around. So, in the Northern Hemisphere, they get nudged to the right, and in the Southern Hemisphere, they go left. This vortex spins above the North Pole, counterclockwise, and around the South Pole, clockwise, and this vortex is surrounded by strong wind currents called jet streams. Sometimes this spinning top of air can shake or even collapse. It's all because of differences in temperature and pressure between the warmer equator and the colder poles. It's like a delicate dance between air masses, and when the balance is off, the vortex can't hold itself together. The relationship between the polar vortex and these jet streams is like a dance-off in the sky, shaping weather patterns and keeping our planet's temperature in check. But just like any dance, sometimes steps get missed leading to a dramatic finale when the vortex collapses. The spinning of our planet, known as its rotation, leads to sunlight being spread unevenly across the Earth's surface. This means that some areas get more sunlight than others. For instance, the regions near the equator receive a lot of sunlight, making them warmer. On the other hand, places closer to the poles receive less sunlight, which makes them colder. This temperature difference between the equator and the poles creates a kind of atmospheric push and pull. The warm air near the equator rises, creating a low pressure zone, while the cold air near the poles sinks, creating a high pressure area. When this happens, cold air from the poles wants to move towards the warmer equator. This movement of air is called the polar vortex. If nothing is stopping this cold air, 
it will keep moving toward the warmer areas. There's a constant battle between these temperature-driven air systems. They're always pushing and pulling at each other. This tug of war affects something called the polar jet stream, which is like a fast-moving river of air high up in the atmosphere. If the polar jet stream weakens, it can't hold the polar vortex in place as effectively. The polar vortex can expand its reach further southward. This can mess up normal weather patterns and might even cause the polar vortex to collapse entirely. Surprisingly, these collapses aren't rare occurrences. They happen quite frequently as part of the Earth's natural climate cycle. And when the polar vortex collapses, it leads to changes in weather patterns, especially during winter. Now and then, these collapses occur. But their timing isn't set in stone. They depend on a mix of factors like the weather and other outside influences. Also, how severe these collapses are can vary. While some disruptions are minor, others pack a serious punch and mess with the weather big time. Over the years, we've seen some major collapses of the polar vortex, each causing lasting changes in weather patterns and affecting different regions. One of the most memorable collapses happened during the Great Blizzard of 1899. This storm goes down in history as one of the worst in the United States, with crazy cold temperatures and tons of snow. It causes unrest everywhere, messing up transportation, farming and daily routines. Another notable collapse occurred on December 2012 and January 2013. It happened because of a sudden warm-up in the stratosphere. This collapse led to a huge blizzard in the tri-state area and a colder than usual winter in the United Kingdom. These events shake things up, bringing extreme cold, blizzards and long winters along with them. The effects are often felt most strongly in areas farther north, such as the United States, Canada, Europe and Russia. The repeated occurrences of these events show how important it is to study and predict the behaviour of the polar vortex. It all usually begins in August, which marks the start of its yearly formation process. During this time, extremely cold air starts gathering in the layer of the atmosphere above the polar regions. The timeline starting from August sets the scene for the following strengthening and potential impacts on winter weather patterns. The polar vortex reaches its strongest point around December, which matches with the peak of winter when temperatures in the upper atmosphere are coldest. As the mass of cold air becomes stronger and gains speed, its effect on the way air moves around the Earth becomes more noticeable. This holds for the current situation too. Observations show that the vortex is getting stronger quickly as winter progresses. In 2023, they received early confirmation, giving them crucial information to track and study the polar vortex path and actions in the upcoming months. This sets a foundation for continuous evaluations and forecasts, allowing scientists to refine their comprehension of the vortex traits and possible deviations from usual behaviour. There are ongoing efforts to predict and brace for the atmospheric changes linked with the polar vortex soon. Recent observations have raised concerns. A noticeable decline in the polar jet stream's strength suggests it may struggle to maintain its protective role. This downward trend hints at a disturbing possibility, a collapse. The consequences of such an event are chilling, especially as the Western world grapples with an energy crisis and insufficient building insulation. A collapse could unleash a surge of frigid air into the Northern Hemisphere, ushering in unprecedented winter conditions, even in regions unaccustomed to extreme cold. Moreover, it's not just the jet streams. Sudden stratospheric warming events also contribute significantly to polar vortex collapses. When temperatures rapidly rise in the stratosphere, particularly above the polar regions, it can disrupt the usual circulation patterns of the polar vortex, potentially leading to its weakening and eventual collapse. Sudden stratospheric warming events are like mysterious puzzles in the sky. They happen when the atmosphere decides to dance in a complicated way, involving some special waves and other weather ingredients. The polar vortex, its strength can be influenced by a climatic superstar called El Niño. This oceanic shindig messes up the usual airflow patterns around the world. 
These El Nino parties don't happen every year. They're more like surprise guests, showing up irregularly every few years and overstaying their welcome for a few months. They come bearing disruptive gifts, messing up how the atmosphere normally behaves. The rainfall patterns are getting jumbled up and causing droughts in some places and floods in others. El Nino's tantrums can lead to some serious drama around the globe. Think of it like a domino effect. Floods, hurricanes and heat waves crashing into different parts of the world, affecting farms, nature and economies alike. Countries hanging out near the Pacific Ocean, like those in South America, Southeast Asia and Australia, get hit the hardest. During strong El Nino events, the ocean's surface gets warmer than usual, creating heat waves that travel toward the poles. These waves of heat reach high into the sky, even into the stratosphere, causing sudden warmings up there. This warming connection between El Nino and the stratosphere links what's happening in the ocean with what's going on in the atmosphere. Strong El Nino events produce even stronger heat waves, which makes sudden stratospheric warming more likely. This can mess with the polar vortex, making it vulnerable to disruptions that could weaken or even break it apart. El Nino also messes with the jet stream, the high-speed air currents high up in the atmosphere. The intense heat waves from El Nino mess with the stratosphere above the poles, which changes how strong and where the jet stream flows. A weaker jet stream can't hold the polar vortex as well, so cold air from the poles can spread farther south than usual. The disturbance of the jet stream and its impact on the polar vortex are like dominoes falling after El Nino-induced heat waves kickstart the process. This disturbance sets off a chain reaction affecting how the weather behaves locally and globally. It shows how events in one part of the world can reach across the globe, affecting the atmosphere far away. Fast forward to the present. September rolls around and El Nino makes its entrance, not too strong, but noticeable. Meteorologists and climate experts are watching closely, predicting that this El Nino might gain strength as time goes on like a small flame turning into a blazing fire by the end of 2023 and into 2024. As temperatures in the upper atmosphere start to cool down, the heat waves stirred up by this beefed up El Nino are expected to get even hotter. This escalation isn't just about making things a bit warmer, affecting how air moves around, shaping weather systems, and potentially setting the stage for some seriously extreme events in areas feeling its effects. The El Nino event is expected to reach its peak around January and February of 2024. During this time, its impact on the weather patterns is set to be most noticeable. It's crucial to be aware of El Nino's stages and how they might escalate to take proactive steps in monitoring the climate and adapting to changes, especially when the polar vortex collapses. When the polar vortex collapses, it brings about immediate and severe effects, including extremely cold blizzards. The sudden release of icy air from the polar regions results in heavy snowfall, powerful winds, and harsh winter conditions. These blizzards can disrupt daily life, hinder transportation systems, and present significant challenges to infrastructure and public safety. Another consequence of a polar vortex collapse is record-breaking low temperatures. The freezing air mass unleashed by the collapsing vortex brings sub-zero temperatures to areas that don't typically experience such extremes. These record lows can have far-reaching effects, impacting agriculture, energy usage, and the overall well-being of human and animal populations. In North America, Europe, Canada, and Russia, certain regions face heightened vulnerability due to disruptions in the polar vortex. These places are more prone to experiencing extremely cold weather events. Such disruptions can lead to various consequences, such as problems with transportation, increased need for heating energy, difficulties in agriculture, and added pressure on emergency services. Understanding this danger is vital for governments, communities, and individuals. They need to grasp the potential risks linked to severe weather, freezing temperatures, and disturbances to daily life. Despite the challenges caused by the polar vortex's unpredictable behavior, 
being prepared is crucial. While we can't directly control or stop a collapse of the polar vortex, we can take proactive steps to boost resilience and lessen the impact on affected areas. Preparation can involve upgrading infrastructure, planning for emergencies, and raising public awareness to safeguard communities. Additionally, because the behavior of the polar vortex is so uncertain, its collapse might happen suddenly, making it tough to predict when or how severe it might be. This uncertainty emphasizes the necessity for ongoing monitoring, research, and flexible strategies that can adapt to changing conditions swiftly. Understanding the potential dangers helps us create and put into action plans to be ready for them. Even though we can't fully control how the polar vortex behaves, there are steps they can take to reduce the immediate and lasting effects when it collapses. The possible collapse of the polar vortex, along with the energy crisis in Europe caused by Russia's invasion of Ukraine, paints a grim picture for the countries most likely to suffer from the upcoming extreme cold. The consequences of Russia's invasion of Ukraine have been devastating economically, not just for these two countries, but for the whole world. Ukraine's economy took a huge hit, losing a significant portion of its GDP in the first year of the conflict. This triggered the worst recession it has ever seen, plunging millions more people into poverty and undoing years of progress. The impact of the war on agriculture which used to be a vital part of Ukraine's economy, has been especially harmful. Additionally, an unusual atmospheric event influenced by El Nino could disrupt the polar vortex, hitting the northern hemisphere at a particularly vulnerable time. Any strain on the gas supply during a severe winter would only exacerbate existing worries about energy prices and availability. Last year, the European Union was hit hard by a serious energy problem. This issue made it tough for the EU to make sure everyone had enough energy that they could afford. This caused a lot of problems for regular people. Because of the higher prices, households had to spend more money, making life more expensive for regular people. Also, businesses had to spend more to keep running, which made it harder for them and caused worries about jobs. If the demand for gas suddenly goes way up because of a big cold snap, the energy problem could get even worse. This means when the weather gets really cold, more energy is needed for heating, which puts even more pressure on the energy supply. And to make things even trickier, the OPEC positive group decided to make fuel prices higher. This adds to the costs in the energy world. For regular people, this means they might end up paying even more for energy, which makes it even harder to pay for basic stuff. When life gets more expensive like this, it can strain families financially, and that can cause big problems for the economy overall. The EU now has to figure out how to deal with this problem. They need to make sure there's enough energy for everyone while still keeping it affordable for people who live there. Germany is now facing its second winter without Russian gas, but fortunately, it has prepared well. It has stored up plenty of gas, boosted its ability to get gas from other sources, and has backup plans in place. Still, we shouldn't think the problem is completely solved. This ongoing challenge is making people unhappy and leading to opposition against climate policies seen as costly. This adds an extra twist to the already complicated geopolitical situation. It shows how important it is to have a solid plan for keeping our energy supply secure. When people can't afford to heat their homes in freezing weather, it's not about politics, it's about survival. There's a small bright side to this icy situation. The bad effects we've talked about don't usually last long. Even though the initial impact can be tough, knowing that things will get better helps us focus on bouncing back. Understanding that these problems are only temporary is crucial for making smart decisions. Even if things get rough in the short term, we need to remember that it won't last forever. Understanding how weather patterns behave is crucial for knowing how to respond and plan for challenges that might come up. When we know what to expect, we can make sure we're ready for it. But we also need to pay attention to how well communities can bounce back from tough situations. Some places are good at recovering quickly 
and even using what they've learned to get better at handling future problems. Think about it like this. Imagine a town getting hit by a big snowstorm. Sure, it might cause some trouble at first, but the people there are resilient. They know how to clean up and get things back to normal. And each time something like this happens, they get better at dealing with it. Sometimes, there's this thing called a polar vortex that can mess with the weather in the Northern Hemisphere. It's caused some major storms in the past, like the Great Blizzard of 1899. And lately, it seems like it might be acting up again. Experts are worried that the polar vortex might collapse soon, which could cause some serious problems. We've seen it happen before, and it's not something we can control directly. This time, there's also something called El Nino making things even more complicated. Even though we can't always predict what the polar vortex will do, we need to be ready for anything. We've got to make sure we're prepared for whatever challenges it might bring. That way, we can keep our communities safe and resilient no matter what the weather throws at us. What are your thoughts on the worst disaster in 300 that's about to befall our planet this year? Let us have your opinions in the comments below. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content.